everybody. Oh, good evening. How are you doing? I hope y'all are doing well. Oh my, but we've missed y'all. Uh, Miss Jamie, Miss Elizabeth, Miss Terry, Miss Debbie, Miss Kelly, Miss Terry, and of course, Miss Danny. Oh, we miss you guys so much. And I hope you're doing well. Um, we got a great lesson tonight. I've gone a little casual tonight. I've got my Awana t-shirt on. Yes, and before you ask, I also have a red one, a yellow one, and a green one. Although my red one has seen far better days. But we all know Miss Danny's favorite color is blue. For those of you who've been to my house, you know I have a blue house. So you know, of course, I'm gonna wear blue. <laughs> so I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we really miss y'all. I hope you did your assignment this week, showing kindness to somebody. I would love to hear maybe how you did that. Uh, I really enjoyed the feedback I've been getting. I have some pictures to share with you real quick from game time. And I was just so tickled to get these back. This is from Liberty's mom and dad. Uh, you can see where Liberty did the uh, 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 scavenger hunt. And oh, she got some really cool stuff. And I think that's a Build-A-Bear maybe in there. But I think it's really cool. I just hope she remembered to put the toilet paper back. Cause she, she's got a lot of people in her household. And, and then oh, and then we've got Donovan. Donovan's uh, parents sent this to Mr. Uh, Newell who sent it to me. And I thought this was really cool. I love your coffee mug, by the way, Donovan. So I really appreciate the pictures and the feedback I've been getting from all y'all. Please keep them coming. Uh, so we're going to get kind of into it. Oh, real quick, I also want to say for those of you who are just joining us, because we haven't had all the emails, sometimes the email, the, the, the registration forms I get, sometimes it's hard to read what's on them. So not all the emails were going out. That's why I keep asking y'all, hey, I've got friends, ask them to get the email. I am putting in the description of this video, I'll put links to all the past videos we've done for Awana. Now you can go to my YouTube channel, you can click, it's uh, Charles0322, Mrs. Danny, and you can click right to that and that'll take you to my, my YouTube channel and you'll see a lot of videos that I've put up there uh, when I used to run a homeschool blog and, and some ones that I, uh, animated videos I used to do. But the, the Awana ones are pretty obvious because they're actually labeled Awana, Mrs. Danny, and then it has either intro or the lesson number. So you can look those up there. So we're gonna get right into our lesson tonight. We are actually in, you know, I got my notes because you know Miss Danny. Okay, so we are in 4.5, Discovery of Faithfulness. So I hope you have your handbooks. Okay, for Clubbers, it is page 222. Leaders, if you're following along in your book, it's page 218. Now, I know some of the leaders are up at the church getting ready to do paper packets. Um, if uh, you, They're in the cabinet. If you left your book up at the church, the leader books are in the cabinet. Just grab them. Okay, and we're going to get right to it. Also, guys, I hope two things. I hope that you're praying before you start the video. I am. And I would appreciate it if you do the same. But I also hope that you're reading the comic strips that are in your handbook. Honestly, this is one of the better ones that they've done. I was really kind of impressed. They kind of really went all out with it, and it's a really good storyline. If you haven't been reading, you'll have to go back to 1.1. It's a quick read, but I really have enjoyed them. I really liked what they did this time around in the handbook. So let's get right to it. Tonight we're discovering uh, dis discovery of faithfulness. Now, first, let's discuss what that is. Now we know what faith is. Faith is belief in something unseen. Now we've talked about faith before. Faithfulness is a noun, faithful is an adjective, and we're kind of talking about those together. It's a little different. When you're faithful or you're showing faithfulness, you're loyal, consistent, steadfast, unswerving, you're steady, all right? So it's a little different than faith, but we're talking about faithfulness being faithful to God. Now we discover faith that, sorry, let me get some coffee. We discover faithfulness when we study God's word. Now it teaches us everything that we need to have, everything we need to know to have a relationship with God and to grow to be more like him. Now, here's the thing though. <laughs> it's our responsibility to read and study God's word. I want you to go to 2 Timothy, 2.15, and uh, it should be up on the screen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, 
a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now let's discuss this, uh, what this verse means. Study to show thyself, approved unto God. Now approved unto God is just an old English way of saying uh, we're doing stuff that makes God, that, that, whereas God is pleased with us. He's pleased with what we're doing. He's very happy with what we're doing. Rightly dividing the word of truth, that just means teaching and telling others the truth, the gospel, about God, telling others about God. So it's not, it's, it's just a very beautiful way of saying that. So I want you to, to go back to it. I want you to look at the first word. What is that first word? Study. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to read God's word. Ooh, ooh I'm gonna make some people go, well, yeah, Miss Danny. No, no, hold on. It doesn't say read. It says study. There is a difference between read and study. I read the newspaper. I read a bottle of shampoo to get the directions. Okay, not really, seriously. I read the directions when the time I get a new coffee pot, okay? Reading and studying are two very different things. When you study for a math test or a history test, you are really trying to absorb that knowledge. Bible, God's word, we are to study it. We are to learn it. We are to absorb ourselves into it, okay? Now, I wanna take a quick little detour though. I wanna show you some other stuff that's really cool about this, this verse. So go back to, we're still in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now I want you to look at some words. First, approved, workman. Now we're going to add the word are, not ashamed. Hmm. A-W-A-N-A. Awana, that's where we get the Awana. Uh, that's how we got our name. Approved workmen are not ashamed. <gasps> wow. Okay, so I just want to <laughs> a little side note for that. That is our main verse. That's where we get what the ministry, what this club is based on, is 2 Timothy 2.15. So remember that. A little off topic but of, of our lesson, but I just thought that'd be kind of cool. So yeah, back to the lesson. So here's the thing we have to understand. God has a plan for each of us. He's planned all this out, and he will be faithful to complete his plan. I want you to go to Philippians 1.16. Put it in my Bible. You should have it up on the screen. One six, I'm sorry guys, one six. <laughs> Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he has a plan, he's going to take care of us. He's faithful to complete that plan. When we are born, even before we are born, God has a plan for each of us. He has this all ready. Now, unfortunately, many of us don't follow this plan. When you're not living in God's will, you know, you're not fulfilling that, that, that plan for your life. And when you fulfill that, there's an incredible amount of joy that comes from fulfilling why you were created. God creates you with everything you need, with the ability to do, he gives you the opportunities. Now, does that mean that if you don't live according to God's will, that you won't, be, you won't have any blessings in your life and, and that he doesn't love you, that you lose your salvation? No, okay, no. God still loves you all the more now than he ever did. You don't lose your salvation. Yes, you can still have blessings. You can still, there's still so much wonderful things that you will have in this life, but you will miss out on the blessings that he has planned for you. And, you know, we talked about just between happy and joy. There is a great joy living in God's plan and his, and the, his will, his plan for your life. Now, if you look at Romans 8, 28. Now, does that mean everything in life's going to be perfect? <laughs> We've talked about that before. You know, Miss Danny's going to tell you no. So 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. 
bad things will happen in our life. We live in a fallen world. Bad things happen. But we can trust God. We know that he will do what is best for us. He will work it out. You know, many uh, the months ago, when most of y'all were there for the lesson I did, and I talked about when we broke down, uh, we had driven out to California, we were coming back, we lived in South Carolina, and we broke down in Oklahoma. And I, Oklahoma City actually is where we broke down, off of I-40, I-40. Whew, anyway, so we talked about that. And I told you what happened, and if nothing, that really, that trip really emphasized, you know, God's got this. He's got this. He knows what he's doing. We may not always understand it. We ha and here's where it gets interesting, though. We have a choice to make. We are not some little mind-numb robots running around. God has given us a full choice to do what we want with our lives. We have a choice to follow him or not. We're, we have, he's given us that great gift. Colossians 1.10, and that is actually your memory verse, that ye may walk, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. When we follow God's plan for us, okay, we follow God's plan for us by obeying his word and living our lives to please him not everyone else. You know, we don't always understand it. You know, I've used this example before. When my daughters were little, they liked to go play in the road. Yeah, they thought this was great fun. And then, of course, I'd get them out of the road because mean old mommy wouldn't let them play. But you see, here's the thing. I perceived a danger that they did not. They did not understand the danger of playing in the road. They just thought, yay, something fun to do, and mommy won't let us do it. In a lot of ways, God is like that. There are things that we don't perceive. There are dangers we don't understand, but God does, and we need to trust him. The more we get to know him, the easier it is to follow him, to trust him. But we've got to get it to know him. That is our responsibility. He leaves that on us. He's not gonna make us, but we have a responsibility to do it. You know, in your in the start here activity in your handbook, which I did too. One of the things I wrote, why, what made the game so difficult? It's kind of hard sometimes because to follow the leader because we don't know what they're going to do. We have to trust them. And that's something you need to understand with God and his word. We need to trust him. He knows what he's doing. We just need to follow him, all right? Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna get stuff for game time together. And I'll be right back in a few minutes. I hope y'all are doing well. I hope you're washing your hands and wearing your mask. And I love y'all. And I will see you in just a few minutes when I have everything set up for game time, okay? Oh, you can't drink with the. Oh, they need to make a hole in these things. I love you guys. Hey everybody! Okay, it's game time! Now, game time requires a little bit of setting up, okay? And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a skee-ball game. Now, <laughs> and our kitten, it's our new kitten, is going to be helping, obviously. So what you're going to need is you're going to need either a box of some sort, like a cereal box, we actually use some cereal boxes, and I'll show you in a minute. And I'm going to put a picture up that you can do this with a laundry basket as well. And, and uh, any kind of delivery box or anything like that, you're going to make a ramp. Now, the balls you use, depending upon what you have around the house, if you have those balls that go like in a ball pit, those are perfect. If you don't, because we don't, Elizabeth, can you hand me one? Um, you can use little ping pong balls. We have a bunch of these because one of my daughters built a, a robot ping pong server something i don't know now if you don't have any balls don't worry you can get aluminum foil and get a bunch of foil and wrap it up into a ball and that the aluminum foil works really good believe it or not so if you have that or tennis balls i think we have tennis balls somewhere but we didn't build a big one for tennis balls but you can use laundry baskets here you go elizabeth thank ah. you this is my volunteer help me okay <laughs> Now, you're going to set up bins or baskets. Now, you can use the laundry baskets in the photo, or you can do something like this. 
where we have these bins from an organizer and you're going to put a point system on them now you can use any kind of boxes or bins use what you have around the house now i hope you can see the ramp what we did was we took a cereal box and we opened it up and then we taped it to two other boxes these are actually unopened boxes uh, if you have cereal in it what you can do is you can actually put it in a ziploc bag that's normally what we do with our cereal anyway. We put it in a Ziploc bag to keep it fresh longer or use any kind of container. But what you're going to do, okay, Elizabeth is going to show you. Elizabeth, uh, you're going to have to move Scamp. <laughs> She's in a loving mood. She's like, I want to play. <laughs> okay, you're going to you have to move her completely to roll it. <laughs> I want to play. Ooh! Try to get in the hundred, Elizabeth. <laughs> ah, come on! <laughs> try it again, try it again. See if you can get in the hundred. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, ready? Go. Come on. <gasps> Yay! She got a hundred! Okay, and you can add more bins. You can make this longer. There's a lot of things you can do to play with this to make it bigger, smaller, and do what works for you. You can do it in a hall. You can even do this outside. We would, but it's really windy out where we are, so we can't do it outside. Anyway, I love you guys, and oh, and if you have any ideas for game time, send them to me. Have your parents email me. Uh, send me a message on Facebook and send me pictures. I really want to see more pictures. I love you guys, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Say bye, Elizabeth. Peace. <laughs> bye.